Hi guys. Um, I just posted a video on the uh, MA50, Marshall MA50 head that I bought. And uh, it didn't come with a pedal, which I don't normally care about because I can just reach over and change the channels. It's no biggie. Um, but I have this. You know, I bought, I got this years ago. It came with another amplifier. And it was the wrong pedal for that amplifier, and I've never used it since. And I tried it on the MA50, and, uh, well, it kind of works. But because it's not, it's these are momentary switches. They don't click like that. Um, it'll only change the channels if I push and hold that. As soon as I let go, it flips back again. So this is of no use. But this works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the guts out of this and put the guts of this in one of these switches and then I can use it for the simple reason that this looks better I like the Marshall box and um, there's the guts for this one it's just as you can see it's just a simple switch so we're going to open up this see what's inside and then I'm going to flip it around so there'll be a hole here or I might leave that switch depending on how it is and uh, that switch will work so uh, let's get going. Okay. Get some light on the subject. Yeah, shaking hands. Yeah, I've had this pedal for years and it's been of no use to anything. It's just an oddball design from Marshall. I don't know what amp it's supposed to be for. But uh, I figured, well, maybe I can make use for that. Do a simple swap out of the guts. Can't be that difficult. I might have to do a little soldering to disconnect this wire from that. This one I'll probably just cut off. So here we have the innards. Yeah, see they're just momentary switches. They click inside, but you can't hear it outside. Shoe. Black and red. Okay. So I can cut these here. See the black and red wire. It's also marked red and black on the thing. So I can safely cut those and then if I want to down the road I can uh, connect it back up again because the color code is matched. So let's uh, do that. I'm going to cut it here and then pull the wire through because it's got this little clippity doodad on there to hold the wire in place. So I'll have to see if I can get that out without destroying it. So we go to cutters and let's just cut this here so this wire can be removed and I can use it for something else and just give me a minute to figure out my plan okay so that was easy I just squeeze it inside this little clip holds everything together and it also holds the clip inside the, the chassis. So we went inside with a pair of needle nose pliers, squeeze that bit and the whole thing popped right out. And then you simply do that and there you go. The little clip is saved and I get the wire out. Beauty. Now, I don't know, I don't think I have an appropriate size socket here for this. Oh look I do. <laughs> it's not even tight. Well done Marshall. Yeah just leave everything in there. That's how it's done. Excuse me. Oh, I'm still fighting a cold. It's been killing me lately. Alright so there's that. Put these back on the switch. So we don't lose nothing. And 
And this can be used another day or something else. Whenever you see me doing stuff like this, nine times out of ten, the parts I'm using have been salvaged from something else. Whenever I throw something out, I take as much good stuff off it as I can. So as a result, I got drawers full of bits and pieces. Okay, so what we got to do is we're going to going to clip those and I'll resolder them back on. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Now I'm going to see if I can make this work on this, which will be wonderful. Lots and lots and lots. There's plenty of room in there for the wire, so there we go. Now, I will clip this little thing. Kind of get my mitts out of the way for you. This little thing on there like that. And then we take it and we push it into the hole. And there it is. This seems a little big for this wire, but it will do. Okay, so we come back to this, we've got socket, hey, this one's a cheap little switch but it's on tight, expensive Marshall switch, everything's loose. Goes to show you, no matter what the name is on it, it can still be a piece of shit. So, I'll get rid of that. Now I'm going to put this one on the clean crunch button, just because I figure I want it there, it doesn't really matter. Does not really matter. Oops. Oops, stuff falling over. Okay, so that's that. And then we give it a snug, make sure she's tight. Here we go. Okay, just hang on one second. Okay, I just uh, stripped off the ends of this and um, got them ready. I'm going to uh, just tin the ends. Get my soldering iron ready. Scrape the shit off. That's what I'm doing here. Is the soldering irons will uh, cr uh, clog up with all kinds of uh, old slag and stuff from the last time you used it. And that stuff's actually an insulator for heat, which causes you problems. So, clear all that stuff up and get a nice clean tip. So, um, yeah, what I'm going to do is tin these leads. Tinning is simply adding solder to the, uh, to the wires. And it makes it easier soldering it onto the other piece. So, I always tin the wires and I tin the lugs. And these lugs already have solder on them, so I don't have to do that. But, uh, this helps in the soldering process because now instead of soldering wire to a lug you're now soldering solder to solder which makes it a lot easier and, uh, and tidier okay so now I will just nip off the end so I got a nice clean end the same here I will strip off a little more wire than I need so I can do that. Okay, so we get rid of the little clip. Now let's see what we have to work with here. This wire goes on that, and this wire goes on that. So, oops. what I'm going to do. There. 
this one. It's too big to push it through the hole, so I'm just going to. Hang on a second. Get nice flat. I don't like that. Okay. What I'm gonna do. What I'm doing here is I'm gonna put a little glob of solder on here because I don't have three hands. So now, God, these shaky hands are killing me. There. And that is that. Okay, so here's the switch. Nice Westinghouse switch. And um, the wire's connected. All I gotta just put the backpack on. And we are in business. One thing I will mention is that when you're doing this, um, when you're working with a switch like this, um, it's made of plastic. Try not to get the lugs too hot because it will melt the plastic, it will melt the guts inside, and the thing's pooched. So just as much heat as you need to give it a little dab and a little dab, and get off there as quick as possible. Make sure you got a good solder. So, that's that. I'm going to put the backpack on. We'll uh, take it upstairs and... Uh, Try it. Okay, so there it is. All wired up. And we go up here. The green LED. The green light indicates clean. Go to dirt. Clean, dirt, clean, dirt, clean. Very nice. If the uh, second switch was in there, this was the proper uh, proper rig. The uh, the other switch would work the boost which I don't use anyway because it sounds like shit so um, here we go and there's my uh, Joyo British pedal I'm going through all my dirt boxes to find out which one works best with this amplifier so far this one is, is working out it's a surprisingly good pedal did a video on it way back when but it's, uh, it's a good little pedal you can get them on, on eBay brand new for like 50 bucks sometimes less um, well worth it. Uh, the only thing is that when you turn the gain up, you get past about two o'clock, it starts to get a bit noisy. But if you keep it uh, keep it below two o'clock, it's uh, it's a good little crunch pedal. So anyway, that's enough babbling. So here we go. All set. Thanks for watching.